everyone, I'm Donna Louise and welcome to my YouTube channel for the love of puzzles. Today we start our journey around the world, an epic 42,000 piece jigsaw puzzle from Educa. I've already done the unboxing video, I'll leave a link to that in the description below, go check it out. I realize that this video may be a bit long, so for the love of puzzles, let's just crack into the first bag of 6,000 pieces. I want to thank everyone for all your input. I had asked about piece sorting and video length in previous videos, and you all provided me with so much helpful feedback. I decided that trying to sort 6,000 pieces while sitting on the lounge just wasn't going to happen. I needed to use my table. I needed the space and the stability of a firm surface on which to sort. So I decided to record the sorting process. And I can always speed it up or slow it down as needed to work well with the video, or not even include it. Well, we are sorting and we are sorting into so many piles. This is about an hour and 45 minutes of sorting. And look at that bag. I have not made a dent into it. Got a few little of the edge pieces. Look how beautiful the sky is over here. Look at these colors. They're so beautiful. I can't wait to do the sky. Up there I have some of the mountain pieces. And then, oh my goodness, I have so many piles. They're coming together and they make logical sense to me. And perhaps I'll sort some more and then I'll come back and I'll explain to you all the piles that I've done because I kind of keep moving them around or I have some unknown piles and then I find stuff that matches and then I make a new pile. But um, yeah, it's really interesting. The image that my hubby printed off for me, the coloration is a bit off, so I'm actually referring to the booklet a lot too. And one thing I just want to point out, it's a bit maybe hard to see, I'm not sure if the camera will focus, I can put some images, but like it almost looks like some of the image is blurry like out of focus even though it's an illustration which is kind of funny because other stuff looks nice crisp and clean and I like it so I don't know why and I think maybe it's to denote stuff in the back I'm just finding like the windows on these two buildings here are very they're just very out of focus but like this piece here has the windows and like a bird's wing and the wing looks fine, so maybe maybe it's just some of it. So some stuff looks very in focus and some stuff looks a little blurry. And perhaps it's just to denote stuff in the foreground and the background. But what I thought was so cute, look, I found antlers, been building the moose. And then over here, being a Canadian, look at that, beaver crossing. I've never actually seen a beaver crossing in Canada. We do have moose crossing signs. It's mostly like moose, deer, caribou, elk, just to let you know, big, big game crossing. But yeah, there you go. It's coming together quite nicely. So I'll keep, uh, keep plugging along, but maybe this video might end up just being a bunch of sorting and that's fine. As for the video length, I decided to film 15 hours worth of work and then take a break to make the video. Now sometimes this might be a little more or a little less depending on a good stopping point. I'm collecting so much footage that editing it all is a whole other job in itself. So keeping it to manageable amounts like 15 hours means that I won't get overwhelmed. It's also a nice time to take a break and do a different puzzle. I just couldn't fully sort and not start assembling pieces that obviously went together. So I worked on a bunch of the smaller signs and birds. There are a lot of birds in the sky in this section of the puzzle. A lot look like birds of prey to me. This panel is definitely very North American in design. A lot from the US and a good amount of Canadian landmarks as well. Building some of the smaller animals and signs also just gave me a nice break from sorting. What if I told you <laughs> that this is a um, organized chaotic mess, <laughs> which makes complete sense to me. Eight hours it took me, pretty much almost on the dot, eight hours to sort through 6,000 pieces. And each one of these piles makes a lot of sense to me. For example, um, various greenery, unknown pieces, 
one of the buildings, which I don't actually know which building this is, so during voiceovers, I'll talk about some of the buildings. This is a pile of um, animal fur. These three piles here, these were three piles that accidentally got blended together, but they're all in the lower corner area. So there were the red love pieces. I believe that's a sculpture in New York. Then there were pieces of like the animals and the teepee, this area down here. And then this was more the rock pieces, maybe some animal fur mixed up in there as well. Um, let's see, this is like the Texas oil rig one of the bridges, another building. This is part of the Space Needle, the Las Vegas sign, the Route 66 sign, some more rocks, the Hollywood sign, the red pieces of the Golden Gate Bridge. And then the bridge has a lot of lines, like the support lines. And that I thought originally was Epcot Center, but it's not, I believe it's some dome in Montreal. We have tons of sky, tons of mountains, border pieces, lower pieces, Parliament Hill, everything. Chaotic mess, but it's organized. Oh, this is all the motorcycle. So I do have some other pieces I've joined, some more of the CN Tower over there. Yeah, it's, um, it's interesting. This puzzle would be great for a build as you sort. If it was like a thousand piece or two thousand piece, I would love it as a big puzzle it's great but difficult that that was a workout eight hours of sorting that's a lot that's a lot so my plan now let me show you the image my plan now is to build the frame the border put in place all those pieces that I've already assembled so like I have the welcome to Texas sign the Broadway a lot of the signs Beverly Hills the beaver crossing so I'm going to put those in their appropriate location and I'm going to do a bit more building I think I'll concentrate like on the Las Vegas sign maybe the route 66 sign a few other things this I believe is called the cloud sculpture in Chicago oh, I can't wait to find out more about all these things once I um do the research for the voiceovers so for the rest of this video i think because i'm only eight hours in i'm gonna do at least seven more hours to do 15 hours let's do the border all around let's put those place pieces in place and let's build a few more piles but first i gotta move these off the board and find containers to put them all in i may be able to also put keep some pieces on the board as well but yeah i was it's overwhelming it's a lot, 6,000 pieces is a lot to work with, but I, I'm pleased, I'm happy. So let's just keep plugging along. Storing all the various piles of pieces was another task. Trying not to mix them all back together. I used all my containers, my empty puzzle boxes, as well as some resealable bags. I'm going to need them for all the sections so they will get well used and stay in my puzzle tool pile afterwards. Then I had to safely store all the pieces away from the dogs and so they don't get mixed up again. The nice thing about Odin and Thora, they're really good at leaving things alone that are not theirs, which is great. I decided to do as much of the border as I could, but I do have a few missing pieces. I had a difficult time with this border, especially at the top, loose fit, false fits and if you look I couldn't actually get the top border done I can't see where I've gone wrong and to be honest I wasn't too pleased about that so I just left it for now I started by assembling the custom motorbike I'd say the most famous American motorcycle brand is Harley Davidson which was founded in 1903 so 120 years ago Next to it was a structure with which I was not familiar, the Cloud Gate Sculpture of Chicago. It's a public sculpture by Indian-born British artist Anish Kapoor that was constructed between 2004 and 2006. The sculpture is nicknamed The Bean because of its shape, made up of 168 stainless steel plates welded together its highly polished exterior has no visible seams. It measures 10 by 20 by 13 meters in dimension. 
and it weighs 110 short tons. U.S. Route 66 is one of the original highways in the United States numbered highway system. It was established on November 11, 1926, with road signs erected the following year. The highway, which became one of the most famous roads in the United States, originally ran from Chicago, Illinois, through Missouri, Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, New Mexico, and Arizona before terminating in Santa Monica and Los Angeles County, California. It covers 2,448 miles, which is about 3,940 kilometers. The Hollywood sign is a cultural icon overlooking Hollywood, Los Angeles, and California. It was originally the Hollywood Land sign. It's situated on Mount Lee in the Beechwood Canyon area of the Santa Monica Mountains. The uppercase letters are each 13.7 meters tall and the entire sign is 106.7 meters long. It was originally created in 1923 as a temporary advertisement for a local real estate development, but due to increasing recognition, the sign was left up. And in 1978, it was replaced with a more durable all steel structure. I did not know what this building was. It's the Marriott in Indianapolis. The $450 million Marriott place consists of five Marriott hotels all connected to the Indiana Convention Center. The city of Indianapolis contributed $48 million to the project. Now the hotel has 34 floors and is 376 feet or 115 meters tall. The facility also has a 950 space underground parking garage. It is the third largest JW Marriott hotel in the world. Since its opening in 2011, the JW Marriott Indianapolis has displayed five jumbo graphics on its east-facing concave curtain wall. We see the Welcome to Texas sign on an oil rig, but from what I understand, it's not actually attached to an oil rig. It's just freestanding. I found this website that had a count of the number of oil rigs currently active in Texas. And as of February 17, 2023, the count was 370. Between 1918 and 1920, over 65,000 settlers camped in the boom town of Newton, Texas, after oil was discovered north of Burke Burnett, Texas. The lack of safety guidelines, though, during the quick construction made the community vulnerable to fires, which eventually destroyed the entire town. So sad. Robert Indiana's pop art Love Design was originally produced as a print for a Museum of Modern Art Christmas card in 1965. The first love sculpture in Indianapolis was made in 1970. Since then, it has been released in many different incarnations and sculptural versions now appear in urban centers all around the globe. There's also variants of the sculpture that use Hebrew, Chinese, Italian, and Spanish languages. There are two Native American items depicted. A teepee, which is a conical tent historically made of animal hides or pelts, and in more recent generations of canvas stretched on a framework of wooden poles. And there's also a totem pole, monumental carvings found in Western Canada and the Northwestern United States. The carvings may symbolize or commemorate ancestors, cultural beliefs that recount familiar legends, clan lineages, or notable events. The poles may also serve as functional architectural features, welcome signs for village visitors, mortuary vessels for the remains of deceased ancestors, or as a means to publicly ridicule someone. They may embody a historical narrative of significance to the people carving and installing the pole. Given the complexity and symbolic meanings of these various carvings, their placement and importance lies in the observer's knowledge and connection to the meanings of the figures and the culture in which they are embedded. There is a lot going on in this bottom corner of the jigsaw puzzle. There's a larger saguro cactus plant 
and many animals. A gray wolf, a desert fox, a rattlesnake, as well as a palomino horse. Rattlesnakes are venomous snakes, and all rattlesnakes are vipers. They are predators that live in a wide array of habitats, hunting small animals such as birds and rodents. Now they receive their name from the rattle located at the end of their tails, which makes a loud rattling noise when vibrated that deters predators or serves as a warning to passerbys. They are the leading contributor to snake bites injuries in North America, but rarely bite unless provoked or threatened. And if treated promptly, the bites are seldom fatal. There are 36 known species of rattlesnakes, and they have between 65 to 70 subspecies, all native to the Americas, ranging from British Columbia through to Ontario and then down to central Argentina. The largest rattlesnake, the eastern diamondback, can measure up to 2.4 meters in length. Rattlesnakes tend to avoid wide open spaces where they cannot hide from predators and generally avoid humans if they are aware of their approach. Now, like I mentioned, they rarely bite unless they feel threatened or provoked. A majority of victims, about 72%, are males. And around half of bites occur in cases where the victim saw the snake, yet made no effort to move away. Well, that's the first 15 hours done, eight hours of sorting. I, I did do a bit of building during that eight hour time and seven hours basically of building. Now, I've always promised I would be honest on this channel. And during the unboxing, I voiced my disappointment with some things like the packaging, the reference material, the labeling of the bags, you know, nothing you can't live without kind of thing, but just disappointments. And of course I'm comparing it to the Graphica because that's the last large jigsaw puzzle that I've done. Well, my disappointment has turned to frustration. I'm going to be honest. This puzzle is frustrating to build because the cut of the pieces is in perfect rows and columns. It's a perfect grid cut and they're loose fitting, which means I am unable to even move two pieces without it falling apart. And when you're doing such a large jigsaw puzzle and you have to move the sections around because you, you build in an area, then you move it, it, it it's, it's bad. I'm not gonna lie, it's bad, it's frustrating. I contacted Vicky from Vicky Makes and Builds because she's doing the life puzzle right now. Now her bags are 3,360 pieces, but she said, yeah, that's exactly what it is. In fact, she gave me the perfect word. They're crumbly. The jigsaw puzzle is crumbly. I couldn't have said it any better. And she admitted the reason why she still buys them is she loves the images. I love the image. I love the subject matter, but man, who not impressed with the pieces at all. You saw how I can't even do the top edge. I can't figure out where the pieces go. False fits, loose fits. I just, I gave up. I need to build the inside a bit more. So I'm worried about solid color areas. At least the rest of it, um, I can figure out where the pieces go based on the image, but I am getting false fits. And then the problem is when you think a piece, you want to try it somewhere. And it's funny when it fits there, it's a loose fit. But if it doesn't fit there, it kind of sticks. And so you try to pull the piece back up and then all the pieces come up with it. But because it's so crumbly, they all fall apart. Does that make any sense? Like, oh, the last seven hours of building, they've been frustrating. And I don't like saying anything negative because I, I, I really enjoyed the voiceover. I enjoyed learning about so many different things. I love the subject matter. But oh, so I will say this. If the puzzle would have been in bags of maybe a thousand pieces or 2000 pieces, I maybe not been so frustrated because if I think of the Graphica, imagine the Graphica in 6,000 piece bags, all that beige, I would have lost my mind. I, I absolutely, I would have been so frustrated. Yes, Thora, just like Thora grumbling in the background, I would have been so frustrated. So perhaps 
I would be less frustrated with this puzzle if it was in sections of 1000 pieces, because then you kind of feel, okay, I've, I've completed a section, I'll take a break, go do something else, come back to the next one, and you adapt to it. But because it's 6,000 pieces, it's a lot, it's a lot. And because it's so big and trying to move things around, oh, yeah, that's, I'm disappointed and I'm frustrated. I can't lie, I can't lie. And I do love the image. The one thing I don't enjoy particularly, but that's me, my eyesight, it looks like things in the background. They kind of made it look a bit blurry, but things in the foreground are nice and sharp. I don't like things that appear blurry to me. That's just me, that's just a side note. So yeah, that's what I have to say and that's where I'm at. And my husband, he's so supportive, he's like, look, if you're not having fun, don't do it. I'm like, I did not spend $830 on this jigsaw puzzle not to do it. So I'm, I'm a bit pig-headed that way. And I know that once it's done, I'll love it, but I'm worried about how I'm going to tape it and store it. So I'm gonna have to try to subdivide each section maybe into six and then try to slide them off and s squish them between two things and flip so I can tape the back. I think that's actually going to be quite tricky and difficult and things are gonna fall apart on me. So not looking forward to that. But yeah, the, the, it's my initial honest opinion. I cannot lie. We'll finish this video here after 15 hours. I'll go off and do something else, but then I'll crack right back into it because I'm hoping to release a video every Friday on this jigsaw puzzle. And at this rate, I mean, the sorting took eight hours, but I think I sorted quite well. I do have some missorts, obviously, pieces that are missing. I do think, though, that in seven hours I could probably get quite a bit done. I'm worried for solid colored areas now, like the sky I think will take me quite a bit of time, probably the mountains, at least in this panel. But then, you know, I, I will enjoy once it's all done. I know I will. I'll enjoy the subject matter. I'll enjoy the voiceovers. And I hope you all will enjoy it as well. I know most of you realize how much time and effort I put into these videos. The editing alone, ah! Uh, and I'm trying to capture other angles. The other problem is the shininess of the pieces. It makes it difficult to build because you're dealing with glare, so you're trying to angle yourself. But as well, when I'm trying to film, I realize there's always a little bit of glare that appears at one angle or another. I'm trying. And I think if the puzzle would have been in smaller sections, I could have done a proper top-down view and maybe been able to eliminate the glare. So unfortunately, there is glare because the shininess of the pieces. And it does make it difficult, at least for my eyes, to build. So that's another thing. Oh, I need some encouragement here, people, because I'm feeling a little bummed, but I'll stick with it. And I just hope you enjoy it as well. I know it'll be lovely once it's all done and once I get to display it. The journey, the journey may be a bit frustrating at times, but just my honest opinion and thoughts. What do you think? What's your experience with Educa Jigsaw Puzzles? Is it just me? Well, no, it's not just me. Vicky was honest and she told me I could tell you this. She described them as crumbly and that's the perfect word. Crumbly, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. For the love of puzzles, I hope you enjoy my videos. Please consider subscribing. And until next time, ciao.